welcome back everybody today is week four of our podcast walking freedom i am your host rochelle micah and this is monique hi everyone and um this is my mom and i'm her daughter obviously and today we are going to be talking about let god work amen amen um so last night i had spoken in bible study uh i know we teach every other wednesday me and her we go off and we teach every other wednesday and so last night um the title of my lesson was let god work which is also going to be the title of today's podcast because i just wanted to i really as i was asking the lord i was like you know god what is it that you want us to talk about today and i felt like he just was like you can speak on what you spoke about last night so of course there's an airplane mm-hmm. going across <laughs> do you hear it of course yes. there's an airplane going across um the sky right now but that's okay so anyway like i said the title of today is let god work and i'm not really gonna preach to you guys like i did <laughs> last night but i just wanted to discuss it because i used an example of how um last friday we had a whole bunch of flash flood warnings and signs and um because we had a ton of rain coming out even the kids were out of school i think mm-hmm. because the rain and the wind was so bad and so i remember my sister was coming over for dinner that night her and her kids and I needed to go get some uh, cream cheese because I was making stuffed chicken breasts. And, y'all, they were good, okay? Mm-hmm. They were so good. And so um, I had to go to the store because I didn't have no more cream cheese. So I got in my car, and I got put my clothes on, and I got in my car, and I went to Ingalls. Um, and as I was driving, the rain was just terrible. I hate driving in rain. I don't know about you, Mama. You, like well, you have a bigger car, so it's a lot easier to get through <clears throat> the rain, too. But yeah. I have a very low car, and it makes it ten times worse. It makes the experience worse. And then there's, like, the puddles in the middle of the road. So if you have, like, a low car like me, like, you have to make sure that you do not go drive straight forward. You're going to tip your car over almost. And so, mm-hmm. uh, and your wa- and your wheel's going to go on top of the water. And we don't want no spinning out. So with that being said, I hate 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 driving in the rain and it just seems like i can't see and it's like the windshield wipers they on they were i just got new windshield wipers and they still seem like they just don't be doing their job right and i saw i said last night i don't know about y'all but it seems like when you are like always the one like this behind the wheel (laughs) it always especially if you have a low car it's always this one big suv and only old people drive like this I cannot, y'all. Anyway, so I'm driving. I'm driving, and there's always this one SUV mm-hmm. that just rides the mess out of you and trying to make you go faster and trying to intimidate you. And I'm just like, go around. You see I'm going to speed limit. You see that I'm trying to be careful. Why are you riding me? I hate when people do that. It's so annoying. Um, and it's I just... Agree. You never know what somebody is going through in that car. I'm just right. saying. That's that's what I'm saying. Oh, you I'm never know saying. what people are going through as they're driving in that car. So, with that being said, um, I was on my way to um, Ingalls, and I got to the light. Um, it was like 10, it's a 10-minute drive from my house, and I got to the light, and I got stopped at the stoplight. And I was in my left-hand lane about to make a left turn. And I was the next person. So, like, when the light turned green, I was going to be the first person to go. And I noticed that, like, when I looked up, after being panic, being panic of the stress of just driving, I noticed as I look up that everything just seemed so clear. Like, everything was so clear. And I was like, what? Like, why is everything, why can I see? Like, the, even though it was 110% still raining, mm-hmm. I could see now the lights were working. Like, um, I could see other cars' lights. And I was like, nothing is blurry. Like, nothing, everything was just kind of still and peaceful and i was like wow like this is a moment and i remember saying i was like lord there's a there's a word in here mm-hmm. and that's what i said last night i was like god there is a word in this moment and so everything was peaceful and still until i had to do what keep driving and so as i was writing my lesson last night the holy spirit led me to um say like he 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 gave me the knowledge about how you know when you when you walk in rain when you are moving or when you're driving or when you're running like in rain you're creating resistance as you go against the natural flow of the storm right and so when i was i use the example of how like when i was a kid i 
um, what is it, belly flopped mm-hmm. face forward in the in the pool, and it smacked, and I had to, like, I was limping getting out of that pool. I right. wanted to cry so bad, but I was like, I ain't going to do it because I should know better. Exactly. But I got up, and I was like, you know, and it, and it, and it um, made me realize that, you know, the faster – the faster you go while trying to get out of the storm, the mm-hmm. harder the resistance is and the more pain there's going to be as you are resisting against the water. Right. And so I said all that to say because I know that there's been times when, you know, like my father has preached about, did you unloose this? When my father has uh, preached about, um, you know, sometimes you need, need to keep going, going through the storm, going through the storm. Mm-hmm. And I said, when, and when God gave me this, I was like, well, Lord, am I wrong? Like, And so God was like, no, like there is some seasons where God calls you to be still, mm-hmm. and there's some season when God tells you to pick yourself up and keep going. Right. And, and when even when you said that last night, I had wanted to say something. Um, and I and I understand, you know, because I heard the message in its entirety. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, like sometimes when we're going through that storm, and like what Pastor Richard was talking about, sometimes you got to keep moving. But <clears throat> what we have to understand mm-hmm. is that we have to know. Is God in that stone with us? Mm-hmm. That makes a big difference right. because if God is not in that stone with us and we keep moving, that's when we can cause frictions or other things to happen. Right. But sometimes in those storms, as long as God is with us mm-hmm. and he's constantly leading us through it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, And, and I we get, can continue on. And I got that, that, which at the end of the story, at the end of the lesson, I did say that you guys, how do you know whether you need to leave the storm or you need to stay in it? And right. you always take that back to God. What is God telling yes, you? What yes. is God calling you to do right now in this moment? Because I remember um, for this is episode four. So for the past two episodes, I've been talking about how I've had such a control problem. Mm-hmm. And I remember that God was saying in this season right now, Rochelle, you don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. Even though the storm is raging all around you. You don't have to just stand still. Sometimes there is peace and standing still. Sometimes there is clarity. Remember Mm -hmm. how I said that I found clarity when I was driving? Mm -hmm. There is clarity and standing still. Not when I was driving, but when I was stopped. There's clarity and standing still. And Mm -hmm. so I was saying that, you know... um, that there's but sometimes there's that resistance when you are when God has called you to stay still versus when you decide and I said it was human nature for us to want to pick ourselves up Mm -hmm. and to keep going but God has not always called us to keep going going. forward and it's human nature oh we got to keep going we got to keep going but some moments you cannot pick yourself up Mm -hmm. there have been moments when I have not been able to pick myself up despite people telling me oh you just need to keep moving forward or you need to do this and you need to do that or even me beating myself up of Lord why I can't do this why am I not and it's not even um because and 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 I realized that in those moments that it's because I was not called to keep to keep going Mm -hmm. I was called to let God to remove the storm for me Right. A lot of times we think that we have to be the ones to pick ourselves up and that we have to be the ones to be our provider and our protector and our and our friends and our and do all these things. But God our is saying, healer, let me yes. do the, the work. Maker, the promise keeper. Hallelujah. We think that we have to be all those things in right. our life. But if that and I said this, I was like, if we have to be all these things in our life, if we take on those roles and we take on those responsibilities, mm-hmm. then what is the point of Jesus Christ? Right. What is the point of Jesus Christ being our Savior? What is the point of Him being our Lord if we try to take all so, these responsibilities so in, in to in ourselves? Words, and I know you're going to probably get to some other stuff, but if you can e- explain just a little bit more in detail, like, what does it look like to be still? What does that look like? <laughs> it quite literally looks like what it means. For mm-hmm. me, there have, oh gosh, there have been moments of, I, I, I wore a lot in my mind. Mm -hmm. Right. There is such a war in my mind. Mm -hmm. And for me, sometimes it means that I think that I have to place myself in certain situations or that I have to do certain things or that I have to say certain things. Mm -hmm. For example, like even when it came down to um, spending time with God, I remember that I got to the I was praying and Mm -hmm. I got to the altar and God was like, why are you here? Mm -hmm. And I was like. I said, well, Lord, I want to commune with you. Like, I want to talk to you. Because I noticed that sometimes I'll just go and I'm like, well, Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Lord, and I'm just praying for myself, Mm -hmm. not, and I'm coming to God for myself, but not coming to spend time with him. Right. 
And so when God asked me, he was like, why are you here? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, Lord, I said, I want to actually talk to you today. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually want to spend time with you today, not just figure out what my needs are or ask for what I'm in need of. Right. And, and so, so in the, in that transition and what I'm hearing is like, you know, sometimes we can be so centered on what our needs are. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that, you know, sometimes when God is saying just to be still, it could also mean that you, you can use that time. You don't have to be physical or, or anything like that but and when we talk about being still we're not really talking about the physical movement because even in being still we still got to move we still got to breathe we still have to be but sometimes I think like in being still is just listening for God's commandment God God leading God guiding mm -hmm. but in that time of us being still is taking that focus off of me mm -hmm. and being a vessel that God could be used for somebody else so instead of going always in that mode of praying for yourself, because what what is God command? His first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, our mind, and our soul. Mm -hmm. And the second is to love thy neighbors as thyself. So sometimes, you know, we can take that step back from, you know, the petitions that we have before God. And then instead of focusing on what what our situation is, you know, what about that brother? What about that sister? Maybe mm -hmm. maybe God want us to pray for other people. Right. Because when we pray for others, then God going to take care of us. Mm -hmm. I don't been in that situation far too many times, you know, where um, I, had, I had to learn mm -hmm. to go to God in prayer and not just always be concerned about my needs, but mostly about others, other people need. Or when I go to the altar, mm -hmm. it's not all about me falling, um, getting on my knees before the Lord and praying because uh, I have a strong prayer life at home. So I might have a brother or sister that's at the altar that, you know, I can go up and pray for them. So what does it really look like when God just saying being still? Right. Because I know sometimes too, even in that moment of God saying being still is also muzzling these mouths too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and not, saying not all and not so often wanting to to be so objective in every area of our lives. Right. So sometimes, you know, like like for instance, today when I walked into your house, God always make an example. And um you know, you had mopped the floor. And I was like, Michelle, you got a puddle of water right here. And I forgot what you said. But it was uh -huh. like, oh, my God. I said, I'm not going to receive that from her today. I said, uh, I ain't got no puddle. <laughs> no, but there were puddles. <laughs> there were not puddles, y'all. So, you know, but I could have um, responded to you. But what did I do? I just did what I thought needed to be done. So sometimes, you know, in being quiet and being still... And just waiting on the Lord. Well, since we want to talk about uh, use an example. Go ahead. Put me out there. <laughs> I am not ashamed. So but, I'm just, but I'm no, just saying. But that, I remember though. the like last night when I um I had called you for something and you had just got on the phone and you was just I was like, oh Lord, she in the mood. And you had said something. And it kind of, and you may not have meant it intentionally, no, I but I, I know, yeah. but I was like, you had just said something. And I was like, I remember like, it felt like when you said it, it was almost like it kind of bounced off of me in a mm -hmm. sense of like, I said, Oh Lord, I said, I said, Oh, I, I, I said, Oh, I said, I'm not even about to take offense to this. I said, because it ain't, I said, it ain't, I said, it ain't her. It's the spirit. I yeah. said, <laughs> but, but in reality, what it was is when you had called, I was trying to gather my stuff together because I think it was like maybe. Uh, five minutes before we were supposed to log on to Zoom, and um, because the wet because it's so cold out there, you know I do not like cold weather. Uh -huh. So I was trying to get to your grandma house before Bible study. So I was just trying to quickly grab my stuff. Yeah, but you had sounded very agitated, and oh. so I was like, I. But I remember because it's for me, it's been more of in those moments I would be figuring I would my my mind from is figure out oh how can I fix this how can I you know like yeah. that's my but and, but, wait hold on uh -huh. and that's my mindset and so I'm like 
And, and in terms of me trying to be still and what God is saying, because it's not just about like coming to the altar and just praying for myself, but there's been a lot of moments where I'm always trying to figure out how can I fix the situation? How can I fix the solution? Mm-hmm. How can I fix the problem? And I'm running around with my head, like a chicken with this head, head cut, cut off, off, trying to be almost since God in my life instead mm-hmm. of letting God take care of the problem right and so it gets so exhausting and so worn out to the point where i'm where it's like it's always a mental battle now right and right. then i'm battling and mm-hmm. that i'm and i'm and i've confused the voice of god with the voice of myself right and if so, i'm being honest yeah. and so with that with that being said i've learned how to take a step back and i'm like you know what god I'm going to let you do it because that's what he called me to do is to let him remove the storm instead of trying to push my way through the storm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I I just want to read this because this was my little um, (laughs) devotion this morning. Okay. It says our our weapons are not physical. Mm. Our warfare is, is spiritual in nature. Rather than guns and tanks, our weapons are those of the full armor of God. And, you know, we talk about the full armor a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, It consists of the belt of truth, the buckle around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in in place, and with your feet um, fitly put together with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And they say, our power comes from God alone. Mm. God's plan is to demolish spiritual strongholds. And so when you were, when you were talking, it just reminded me of, of something else. And it, talk, and it talks about the strongholds. Mm-hmm. So it says the word stronghold is found once in the New Testament. And it says that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divine, divinely powerful for the destruction of the fortress, which is a stronghold. And so oftentimes, too, we deal with spiritual um, warfares Mm -hmm. of emotional bondages. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even when God is calling us to be Still, he can also show us who we are in that time of stillness. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I like to talk with my hands, (laughs) y'all. But it shows who we are in that moment of being still. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, I have I have girded I have I read something the other day too, and it was talking about when we're going through battles, don't allow the enemy to win the battle but what we need to do is we need to rise above the battle Mm -hmm. and so when God is 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 telling us to be still is not and and when he's fighting a battle Mm -hmm. because sometimes in that battle that we're fighting he's showing us who we are right in here right so that we can get a better glimpse of of his power like what you say sometimes you want to take care of the situation you want to address the situation right but the power of god would tell you be quiet right be quiet and then when we have a little conversations like this then you can because if you would have took offense to that conversation last night Mm -hmm. then we could have not been in tune today to be do what we need to do for god right because that's what the enemy job is. Right. His job is to confuse us. Right. His job is to come in and to separate and to divide. Mm-hmm. But just like what you're talking about is when we give things over to God mm-hmm. and we take that step back. Yeah. And God not only, you know, when we pray, prayers is not for other people. Mm-hmm. Prayers is for ourselves. Yeah. Which brings us closer to God. Right. Gives us understanding gives us wisdom about the situation that we're in. Mm -hmm. And guess what? God is, he's taking care of us. Right. And I think also too, is that like, um, the, the biggest issue that I've, and, and, and let me say this too, Mm -hmm. even while I'm waiting for God to finish taking care of the storm, Mm -hmm. I'm still standing outside in the rain. Right. 
And so that means that it is uncomfortable. That means that sometimes it can be painful. That means that sometimes it can be lonely. Mm-hmm. And I'm learning how to cooperate with God to to meet him halfway and to stay still in the rain while I'm waiting for the storm to pass. Mm-hmm. And so with that being said, it's like this is because for me, mm-hmm. it's almost like it's written in my DNA to mm-hmm. want to be the problem solver. Mm-hmm. For God to remove that, mm-hmm. it's painful. But it, you know, but hold on. <laughs> yeah, this is good. This is good. This um, is good. It's painful and it's uncomfortable mm-hmm. because now I'm going against. Um, my my flesh is dying. Is what is happening. My flesh is literally dying. Hold on. Yeah, the flesh and dying. my flesh is dying, and it's uncomfortable. It 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 doesn't feel good. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not all. Um, sunshine and rainbow. It's not. No, it's uncomfortable and it's painful. But I've also noticed, and I said this last night as well, is that this is the closest that I've ever felt the presence of the Lord with me. Even though I know that he is always with me. But now it's like he's here. He's right here and I can feel him Mm -hmm. at all parts throughout my day. And I know that even though I may be uncomfortable right now in the storm Mm -hmm. and through the season and through the rain and through the hail and through all of it, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I know that my God, my creator is not leaving me to stay here by myself. He is right in the midst of this storm while he is taking care of the storm. Mm-hmm. He has never left me. As a matter of fact, he's been closer than ever. Right. He's been, I can feel him. I can just feel his every presence. Like, it's just, I've never felt God like this. I've never oh, felt no, Jesus like this in my awesome. entire life. I mean, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful because I hate being in that place that sometimes that I don't feel his presence. I, I don't. That's miserable. I don't hear. Yeah, there. so it's miserable you it's know, being miserable. in that place. But it's all a part of our spiritual growth. Mm-hmm. And so when we are going through these things, understand that it's for, and, and I think you used the word last night, when we uh, graduate from drinking milk, you know, to eating meat. Yeah. And that means we're growing spiritually and we're trusting God more in our life for the things um, for the things of God more than the things of this flesh. Right. But um, I had wanted to say something to you a little earlier when I did this. Mm-hmm. Um, the little thing that we took last, that what you and Makia sent me. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that was on there, it did say, you know, and sometimes we, it's a gift mm-hmm. that God gives us to be a problem solver. You know that, right? Yeah. So when you talk about trying to solve people's problems, that's different than what that situation was last night. Right. Because what happened was last night, you can't fix me because in essence, I didn't do anything wrong. It's just what you heard is what you thought is what you, what you thought you heard, which wasn't what you heard. Mm-hmm. So in other words, what I'm saying is you can still be because that's a gift. Mm-hmm. God can give you that insight that where well, you can bring people together and solve problems or solve issues. Yeah. We took a fivefold ministry. Mm-hmm. Um the no, quiz. quiz so that's yeah. what she's referring to and so but last night it was it was totally different because it was truly it was on your side that because i know from my heart i i wasn't trying to be ugly or anything like that mm-hmm. i just know i was kind of like in a rush so in other words it's like it's like god is dealing with you in that area because we're able to talk about it and like i told you um i think a week or so ago i said rochelle you know we could we should be able to talk about anything. Right. We now will we agree upon everything? No. Nope. <laughs> no, we not. We're not gonna agree upon everything. But we should be able to um talk about anything, if that makes sense. Yes. It you is. know, and be able to share our feelings and our thoughts. But the one thing that um I used to always tell your dad is let's just take it to the word. Even though we may not agree, but let's agree what the word says. Right. And let's, if we love God that much, then when he's in that, when he wants to, he wants to be exalted in everything. Right. So if we are in a disagreement about something, let's take it to the, what the word says. Mm-hmm. And so like even last night, um, the word said, if you have, um, if you have ought against your brother or sister, go to them right. before it gets 
too big and out of place. Right. And I think that it wasn't even that I had art against you. Right, but it's it just, was just that I, I but it, it, I think the thing that I noticed was that it bounced off of me. Normally, I would absorb it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> normally, it norm- and that's how I know that God is doing a work yeah. in me but, because normally... Mm-hmm. I would take that in and mm-hmm. think of, oh, what can I do? Did I do something wrong? Yada, yada, yada. But it's almost like it was like, Psh. Okay, and so like, okay. just what you just said, that's different than fixing um, somebody else's problem or fixing a problem or fixing a situation. What do you mean? Because you are internalizing. When you said, oh, what did you say um, just now? I don't even <laughs> normally I would Yeah, normally uh, I would. It. Digest it or something. Digest it and be like, oh, what did I do? Can I go back and correct or this, that, and the other? No. Sometimes we got to just leave it where it is. Does that make sense? Because if you don't, like, because you did call me back that night and you was like, mom, are you okay? And what did I tell you? I said, yeah, Ricky, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. You said, and and I heard you say, oh, because, oh, (laughs) you were a little slappy earlier, but I didn't even, I I just, I was like, okay, I ain't going to even give in to that. Yeah, but I was like, no, I'm fine. Yeah. I am fine. You know, I just knew I was in a in a hurry. Mm. But um, it, but that is like an emotional thing that we got to come to grips with. So no, to speak. and I think too, I realized that I when I am emotional, mm-hmm. like everything intensifies. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but like it's so weird. And I also notice that when I'm emotional, mm-hmm. that's the more that I absorb in. And so I either can absorb in more Christ or I absorb in more of the exactly. world. And, and so I, I, but I notice that it's bad. Like when my emotions, when I'm sad or when I'm, um, or when I'm upset or when I'm, um, all these things, it's like, it's like a, the door is open and I'm taking in every single thing. And it's either that I have to take in more of God. Like, I have to stop. And I, and that's one of the things that God has told me, too. Because I notice when I'm emotional, sometimes I want to stay emotional. And I want to feed what my emotions is craving. So, if I'm mm-hmm. upset about something, I'll go watch a freaking rom-com. And then I'm upset because I don't even know what a rom-com of is. romantic comedy. And oh. so, <laughs> I'm, I'll go watch a rom-com. And then mm-hmm. now, I, and I'll finish the movie. And I'm even more upset because I'm like, dang, I want that. I want that in a romantic yeah. you know what I mean and so then like and then I noticed that my emotions are even more you know so what God is saying and I remember God was like Rochelle you cannot keep doing this to yourself right so he but, said wait but, hold on okay because he said he said I'm not telling you to not be able to watch um like a rom-com or like a romance show or movie or anything mm-hmm. I'm not saying that you cannot watch these things what I'm saying is that when you know that you are in an emotional state, instead of going to these things to be your fixes, come to me instead. Stop going to the world. Stop going to what's going to make you feel better because they never do. Right. He said, come to me. Right. And he said, I'm not saying that you can't watch it. I'm saying that you need to give it to me first. So as 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 tells us that we are to demolish arguments and every pretension that set itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And it says, taking your thought captive simply means gaining control over what you think about yourself in life. Mm -hmm. And it, it can't be no simpler than that. Take everything to the word of God and find your strength in God because it's only him that can give us the power to overcome by the power of the Holy Ghost. And this is why you feel with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Because the Holy Ghost gives us the power to overcome. Because we can't overcome it in this flesh. Mm-hmm. So everything, take it to God. And I think we talked about this before. You got to begin to walk in the authority. Mm-hmm. That Jesus Christ. And, and my counter to that was, yes, that is what you're supposed to do. But what about those who God is working on that? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what about those who it's hard? And that's what I said earlier. Sometimes you cannot mm-hmm. pick yourself up and walk in it. But with God, you can do all things. But the thing is that you got to get to a place of surrender. You got to get to a place of understanding mm-hmm. and knowing that you can't do it all. 
Right. And sometimes, especially for me, people who mental, uh, mental, who uh, battle mental battles, mm-hmm. and it's almost like you literally cannot. And that's why I say everybody doesn't think the same way, Mom. Not everybody processes things the same way, and not everybody can just pick themselves up and dust something off. Sometimes mm-hmm. people internalize things like I do, and you have to learn how to work with that and. And, and because of that, because I used to internalize everything, I was always like, well, I don't want to feel this way, so how can I fix the problem instead mm-hmm. of instead of going to God, mm-hmm. going to Jesus, and being like, Jesus, um, I need you to remove the problem mm-hmm. instead of me trying to figure out my way around it. Right. Yes, you are supposed to get up and walk, but sometimes you can't do it. So instead of pulling yourself out of the storm Mm -hmm. or going to find shelter in the storm, go to Jesus Christ, who is the only one who can remove the storm. Yes, 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 yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and I got a new Bible. Well, it's not a new Bible, but I didn't put all my tabs in here. But I'm trying to find Romans chapter 2 here. Help me find it. Ouch, my arms is weak today. So, big study Bible. Second ten. Yeah. Romans chapter what? Chapter 12 and verse 2. And then we're going to, after this, we'll go to Matthew, which is what we're coming at. Matthew 14, which is what we're coming at mm-hmm. him today. Um, chapter 12, verse 2. Okay. This Bible is confusing to me. Okay. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, perf- um, pleasing, and perfect will. Right. And so it says your mind, not just your behavior, must change. God calls us to change sinful behavior that does not honor him. Instead of focusing on your outward behavior, Work on discipline in the mind from which the behavior stems. Allow God to transform you by the renewing of the mind. Mm-hmm. And so you are getting stronger. Mm-hmm. You, I'm getting stronger. Everyone out there is getting stronger. But we're all at different spiritual levels, right. you know, in Christ Jesus. And so, but understand that you're not going backwards, you are going forward. Right. God is taking care of us. God is the problem solver. Right. We can lay these things before God. And when we lay these things before God, then God brings us to scriptures like this mm-hmm. that ensures that he's in control. Right. And there's some things that only God can control. Right. But then we got to find in ourselves, within ourselves, that level of discipline mm-hmm. And understanding how not to be so quickly moved by our outward circumstance. Mm-hmm. Meaning that you could have had a good prayer, prayer that morning or any morning. And then you go into work and your boss comes just slamming doors and calling you and yelling at you. Did you really put on that whole armor? Mm-hmm. Well, it's your response. Exactly. That whole armor is going to make you respond the way who? God wants you to respond. Right. Not the way Rochelle wants to respond. Right. You know, and if anybody knows about this, I do. Because mm-hmm. y'all have been with me on many car rides. Girl. <laughs> give me my Bible back. <laughs> yes. Take the, give me my Bible Take back. the word. Yes, give me Take the, word. the word. So I had to learn how to start digesting the word and not allowing other people uh, dysfunction or even sometimes they could have been right but because mm, I right. wasn't in the right frame of mind right. I received it wrong mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we can always be in those positions as well yeah you know so God he does ha- oh he's a handler he is and, I, and, and 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 in that going back to what you going back to what I was saying is that um oh my gosh what did you say you had said something and it reminded me of just like what I had said earlier about like that it is painful when you have to elevate 
Mm-hmm. When you have to, when God has to remove some growth, things, when growth. I always call it growth spurts. Yes, and I, I used spiritual to spiritual growth spurts. And I used to remember, no, growing pains, not growth spurts. I used to call it growing pains because okay. I remember that whenever God was trying to do something in my life, when I was like probably around high school age, mm-hmm. uh, like 18, 17, 19, around there, and um, 17, 18, 19. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I remember that whenever. Every time God was trying to show something, like show me something or Mm -hmm. do something in me, I would run away. Mm -hmm. And it honestly is full circle because when God did something that I did, when God wanted, when I didn't get my way, let me Mm -hmm. say this, when I didn't get my way, I always ran from God. Yeah. I always ran from him and And I used to have a a tantrum. Don't read the Bible because Mm -hmm. when the word of God is speaking to them. It cuts like a two-edged sword. It cuts like a two-edged sword and you don't want to conform to this. Right. And so I used to, and I used to run away until I got to the point where I realized what was happening Mm -hmm. and that it wasn't that I was, that God was being mean or unfair to me. It was just that I was growing. He was calling me to grow and growing is not easy. And also, and we, and I think a lot of times we think of it as growing too, but you can also look at it as a level of, um, God is changing almost, I like to say changing your DNA. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that he is when we are born, we are um, when we when we live on this world, we are not who we are originally supposed to be in terms of when you think about like Adam and Eve. Like we were not, we are supposed to be like them, but we're not, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of things has happened. We're born into sin. We right? are born into sin, and so a lot of things we are not who we are supposed to be um, spiritually, mentally, physically, right? Mm-hmm. But when Jesus Christ comes into our life. Become he begins, you become born again, but not just born again um, spiritually, but it's also, I'm going to say mentally, because the things that are changing, yeah, he said you he begin to, to mind. you, yes, with the renewing of your mind, but that means that things are literally being created in a new which means that sometimes when you're growing up, when you're having those growing pains, they're going to hurt. Mm-hmm. Right. They're going to hurt on the inside. They might not hurt physically, but they're going to hurt spiritually, spiritually and they're going to yeah. hurt mentally. And you're going to feel that. Right. And it's not comfortable. Right. It is not pleasant. Right. It is not. It is very uncomfortable. But God has to do the work. He has to renew us and literally change our DNA right. to what he originally wanted for us from the beginning. And so that DNA, uh, you can characterize that as um, God's character. He's changing us from who we are to his character, which is putting on the fruits of the spirit. Right. Operating and walking according to the word of God and what the fruits of the spirit says that we need yeah. to do. And when we think about being born again, I, I don't remember know if you remember this, but um, sometime last year I had did a Bible study and I was talking about being a born again Christian. Mm. And let's just say for myself, um, when I got back in church, I think I was about 25, right? Mm-hmm. And I uh, went back and God slayed me in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Because I had already been baptized in Jesus' name when I was like 17 or 18 years old. Yeah. But I kind of walked away from the church and walked away from God. And so when I, when I came back to Christ, <clears throat> it, I'm just going to use the age 25, so I might not have been quite 25, but... Mm-hmm. From birth up to 25, the way that I dealt with issues was the way I was taught by the world. Mm -hmm. So coming into Christ, putting on that new man, Mm -hmm. now I'm at this place where I know that the way I used to do things Mm -hmm. is not right. Right. So it's almost like when God talks about it in the Bible, he say, you know, by the renewing of your mind. And how do we do that? We do it with the word of God. Mm -hmm. So now if I'm facing an issue, do I handle it the way uh, Monique, the one from 1 to 25 would handle it? Mm -hmm. Or do I handle it from the time that I have been born again and knowing who Christ is? Because now, like you said, he's changing who I am. Mm -hmm. So I no longer am, I'm no longer myself. I now belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. So now I want to do it the way that Christ does it. Right. And so now in order for me to do that, 
I have to read the word of God so I can understand, you know, what the word of God says and how do I apply this word of God to my life? Do I stop lying? Do I stop cheating? Yes. All of those things. <laughs> yes. God said, those, these are the things of the world. Right. Now he says to me, your, let your yay be yay and mm -hmm. your nay be nay. Which, so that means I got to tell the truth, even if it might hurt somebody. Which goes back to last week's episode when we talked about how you have to hate sin. Yes. And then you got to get to the place where you hate sin and that means that And not the sinner. Hate the sin, but not the sinner. Yes. You know, and so... And that's why... Knowing that when last night happened, I was like, oh, well, even if you wasn't doing it intentionally, I was like, there's a spirit that's trying to attack me. So that's why I said my mind frame was it wasn't I said, oh, it's not her. It's the spirit. Like, and I literally Girl, and I had I'm to. on it. I'm on it. God prepared. God prepared me for you today, baby. <clears throat> I was listening to something this morning. I was trying to write it down. Um, and that's a spirit of discord. Mm hmm. And that's only strife, discord, and division. It doesn't come from God. Mm -hmm. It comes from the evil one. Mm -hmm. But but I was writing part of this down as I was listening to yeah. stuff. But it says loose, unity, love, understanding. And it says guard your heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And that's what we, girl, I told God, I didn't cry, <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. She cut Glory, up, yes. God is good. God is good. God is yes. good. But, you know, when that spirit of discord and strife come upon you, you got to be able to recognize it. Mm -hmm. And then you, like the Bible said, take every thought into captivity. Right. If it don't line up with the, God, with the word of God, mm -hmm. you ain't got to go correct somebody else. Look in that mirror, correct yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you know the spirit. Mm -hmm. The Bible say, try the spirit by the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so this is why I'm also saying that God has given us the authority. And that authority allows you to get up and walk up out of that situation. And I understand what you're saying about these new age generation of, oh, well, I got to process this and I got to oh, do this. Lord. Uh -uh. The word of God mm -hmm. is, is like a two-edged sword. It will come and it will just cut that thing out. Just be ready to let God in. Be ready to change. And to be transformed and to be renewed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you know, I and don't, let the word just come and do what it do. Because I believe the word. Now listen here. I believe. Look, that word been cutting me see, too. All right, I go believe go that the word does cut like a two-edged sword. Ooh, but I Jesus. also believe that there are. So I'm not going to get with. I'm not going to go back and forth with you about the new age process thing. Because I need to process. Process. I need to process. Okay. okay process. Keep processing. I am. I am. I'm going to process exactly what God is telling me. <laughs> Y'all, I got it. Shoot. No. No. <laughs> this young lady in her process, Lord have no, mercy. No, because they, no, because they, y'all, <laughs> no, my parents have a very bad way of understanding <laughs> when things, they, when they, things don't line up with the way that they think they should, they have a very bad way. Listen, of God understanding. has changed me a lot in this area. A now. lot, but he's still working. Hallelujah. Thank and, you, Lord. He's working on all of us. Yes, yes he, he is. is. But God is good. But the thing about it, baby. What? Give me your hand. Is that unity and that love towards God mm -hmm. that will change both of us yes, as we go will. on through this cycle of life. And then we grab the hand of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I feel the spirit in this. And just let God continue changing us. For his good and for his glory. We grabbing the hands of everybody who's listening. Yes. And so, well, you grab their hands too. Uh -huh. You know? Oh. Yeah. Oh, we gotta this grab. I gotta grab y'all hands. <laughs> because this is how God wants us to walk in the unity and the love of God. Yeah. He said one mind, one body, and, and one, one accord. accord. Oh, and I got Amen. a lesson. When Essence was talking about that, Thank I got you. a lesson that God gave me. Jesus. Uh, uh -huh. On that on that scripture. Mm -hmm. Um, And I ain't going to. Because I might, yeah, I might talk I'm about just, it. But, ooh. but I'm just. I, I, I know, you know, and this is why. And God is trying to. He's trying to bring his church back to a place. He's trying to bring the church back to a place because mm -hmm. the churches have been so out of order and God has not been held in high esteem. Mm -hmm. He has not been held as the Holy One. And our God is holy. Yes, he is. He's holy. And all God wants us to do is to walk in obedience to the Word of God. And we can live and we can thrive and we can be happy and we can do everything that God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. And it don't, necess it don't have to look like the world in order for us to be happy. Right. But he is calling us out of the world. He said, come from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. There should be no reason why, as a child of God, that we should be, you know, I don't even know where this came from. But I just know we need to learn 
what the word of God says about walking in love one to another, mm -hmm. forgiving one, one another, yeah. walking in peace. Mm -hmm. Because he wants to be glorified. Jesus Christ, God wants to be glorified in everything that we do. Yes. And if he's at the forefront, if he's at the, if he's covering us and if we call him our Lord and our Savior and that he is, as he, he is the number one in our life, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And if we say that, then we must mean it. Right. But coming and being reborn again, that means this person has to change. Right. Amen. Yes, it does. Amen. With that being said, I would like to read the scripture on for tonight's or tonight's for today's <laughs> podcast mm -hmm. um, that God has given me this word about letting God work um, and sitting down and being still. Um, so we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 14. We're going to read 13 through 21. And um, I'm going to give you all a second to see if you all can get Mm -hmm. Where um, they go to play it again. I'm gonna give y'all a second to see if um, y'all understand where I'm coming from because I, when I first read the scripture, I was like, I was like, oh, there it is. But you know, I didn't, I read the scripture so many times and I didn't see there's so many messages in just one scripture and one passage oh, yeah. that yeah. it's not even funny. So, anyway, it says, As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left the boat, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he had headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd, and he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, there, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, That isn't necessary. You feed them. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up towards heaven, and blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets um, of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. Amen. 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 And so... Can you guys, those that are listening, do you see the where I say let God work at in the aspect of being still and letting the storm pass? Because I didn't initially see it, but then I read it and I was like, oh my gosh. And it points out here in verse 18 and 19, it says, He's, Jesus said to them, bring them here. So first and foremost, what are we bringing? What do we have to bring to God? We have to bring the problem. We have to bring, no, not even not even bring the problem, right? The problem is sometimes outside of us. But what we have to bring is what we have. Mm -hmm. What do you have? In terms of that, we got to meet God halfway. Mm -hmm. Okay? Which I think was hitting on a little bit of what you was talking about earlier about being able to pick yourself up. Sometimes all you can do is stand up. Mm -hmm. That's all you have. And God was like, that's all I need you to do is stand up and watch me take away the storm. I don't need you sitting. I don't need you lying down anymore, but I need you standing up, right? Mm -hmm. And so bring what you have. Lord, mm -hmm. all I have right now is... Mm -hmm. I remember that and I remember that time I got up and I said, Lord, right now all I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. Lord, all I have is a hallelujah because I've been going through it. But all I know is that if I turn to you, all I have is praise. All I have is love for you. And sometimes that's all it is. Right. Lord Jesus, all I know is that all, right now all I have is my love for you. Right. Amen. And so God is saying, Jesus is saying, bring me what you have. And then that's he told good. to people, then he told the people to sit down. Mm -hmm. And that's all y'all need. <laughs> that's all I needed, mm -hmm. y'all. When I read that and he said, bring me what you have and then sit down. He didn't say, bring me what you have and then go out and go buy some, go out and go. Um, he didn't tell the people, bring me what you have and then go and buy some more loaves. Right. He didn't tell the people, bring me what you have and then go out and get the ingredients to make the loaves. Right. He didn't tell the people, go out, bring me what you have and get the stuff to be able to make it. I don't need the pots. I don't need the pans. I don't need the fire. He didn't say, bring me what you have and then pace back and forth while you're worrying about whether or not I can do it. He said, bring me what you have mm -hmm. and sit down. Yeah. Be still. So in other words... Be still and let God work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's, that's good. it. That's really good. Be still and let God. him work. And so I said that this was a meat over a milk situation because, mm -hmm. like I was saying earlier, sometimes we think that we have to pick ourselves up and, and go forward in the storm. But what if you don't know that while you're walking forward trying to get out of the storm that there's a bridge that has collapsed, right. but you can't see because the wind and the waves, right, mm -hmm. or the wind and the, um, and the rain is in the way. Right. Oh. Or maybe you don't know that there's a car coming that skidded off the road because they couldn't see as well and they're heading straight towards you. When right. God told you, all I told you to do is to bring me what you have and to be still. Because right, right here, this is the safest right. place where you can be. Right, exactly. It's almost just like the scripture that says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. Because I care for you. Yes. And so... That is, and, and, and as I was, you know, just sitting down and processing and mm -hmm. listening to what God is saying, and I just had to share that because I was like, I didn't have anything else to speak on on Wednesday but that. And mm -hmm. like I said, I always say that I don't go through what I go through just for myself. Right, exactly. I always, somebody out there needed to hear that. Somebody out there needs to hear that right now is mm -hmm. that, you know, this has, and I said it, and I said it last night and I'll say it right now, is that this has been the darkest period in my life. Yeah. The darkest. Last year, mm -hmm. last January was hell for me too. <laughs> it quite literally it was. Right. And then this January has not been better, but the difference is is that last January I wallowed mm -hmm. in my sorrow. Mm -hmm. I stayed in my sorrow. Right. This time, now mind you, I did pray to God last mm -hmm. year. I wasn't just like, oh, da da da, but it was a woe is me mm -hmm. type thing. And this time around, it's like, God, I pass over the reins to you. Mm -hmm. You can now be the one who is carrying the carriage. Right. I don't need to steer the horses. All yeah. I need to do is sit and allow you to take the storm away because I cannot do it. Right. Exactly. You are the you know, only there's, one. There's that saying that um, when you're going through a situation, you can begin to pray and ask God to either take the storm away or if this is for me to carry, go through the storm with me. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes some storms are not are not ours. They come from other situations right. and the enemy and all these. So God, Supernatural. If this, this is not for me to bear. Remove it. Mm -hmm. But Father, mm -hmm. if I have to bear this, then go through this with me, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Pick me up and carry me. That reminds me of that little, um, that little uh, poem about, you know, Jesus walking in the sand and all you see is two footprints because he's carrying you. Mm -hmm. And in that time of, that he's carrying you, you still glorifying him. You still thanking him. You still going through what it, what it takes to be who you are in Christ Jesus because you are doing exactly what the word of God says. He said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Amen. 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 And I love the fact that even in that verse 18, my Bible version, it says, bring them here to me, he said. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. See, he don't even have to say a whole lot mm -hmm. to, so that it would be effectual. Right. That it would be productive. Mm -hmm. That it would multiply. Just hear, just, just be at a place where we can hear from God. Depend on him. Right. You know, we don't have to walk in fear of everywhere we go. Oh, Lord, is this where you're telling me to go? No, you go. You get up and you go and you be who you are because that is who Jesus wants us to be. He don't want us to be afraid to live. He don't want us to be afraid to live. Mm -hmm. He don't want us to be afraid to drive through the stone. Mm -hmm. Because if we are and we say he's with us, then how do we say he's with us and we're afraid to drive through the stone? So we got to learn how to put him on. But you also need to know how to recognize what exactly what God because there could be a time when God said, you know, you might need that, um, whatever you needed from the store. But He said, don't go. Mm -hmm. Cream cheese. Cream cheese. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't need. He said, don't go. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember my mom told me this story um, a while back, and you know, we're from New Orleans, and um, she said that she used to be terrified of driving. Across the, the um the big the bridge the, yeah. yeah in New Orleans, and um she was coming <clears throat> home from work, and she said the Lord had told her, um, 
because she had worked two jobs. She worked one in the morning and one at night. And so she was coming home from her day job. And it might have been in the evening. And But anyway, and I hope I'm telling this story right. But she said the Lord had told her, go to the church and pray. Mm. And so she was obedient to go to the church and pray. Well, by the time she got finished praying and but later on that evening when she got home, she saw on the news they had a major wreck mm. in a direction that she was going. That she was going. Mm. So God speaks to us. Right. That's why we don't have to live in fear. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you had to go to the store to get what you got to get, Go to the store. But I understand about driving in that rain, baby. And I understand about driving at night. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do either one. Yeah. And then this is another um, testimony about God. Um, when you guys were smaller. Mm -hmm. And when we first moved here to South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, I used to hate to drive on 85. Mm -hmm. Because of the 18 wheelers. Yeah. Woo! Ask Darrell, I used to be like you. <laughs> boy, that boy would be sitting over there just falling laughing. out laughing. I'd be like, Darrell, don't laugh at me. I'm just a driving yeah. and driving. And um, then I remember um, we, were, we were in one church that was closer to home, but then I felt like God was sending me to a church in Greenville, the Easley area. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, when I went to visit the church, I had absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. And I prayed. And I said, God... If this is the church that you want me to be in, I said I have two requests. Because mm -hmm. at that time I had a, a, a we had a suburban, mm -hmm. and gas prices at this time had to went shoo. So I said, God, keep my suburban filled, mm -hmm. and take away the fear of driving eighty five next to eighteen wheelers. Mm -hmm. Those are the two things. Mm -hmm. So that first time I went to visit, I went back again. And I went back again. And I went back again. And then one day I was driving on 85. Mm -hmm. I said, oh my God. <laughs> I'm not even afraid to drive on 85 yeah. anymore. So it's like when we put our trust, our faith, and our hope in God. Right. He he supplied the need of the gas. Mm -hmm. He supplied, he, he took away the fear of, eight, of me driving next to 18 wheels on 85. Right. See, God is not a God of fear, mm -hmm. but of power, love, and a strong mind. Amen. And that's when we talk about putting on that helmet of salvation, mm -hmm. trusting in him. And sometimes when we go through the trials and tribulations of life, God is teaching us to trust him mm -hmm. in the moment. Yeah. Be still. But and trust him. Work. And, that's it. and then in that in that stillness, he's still changing us. Right. Yes, he is. You know, and, and so right next to you. Trust me, baby, I got a lot of testimonies. Ooh, girl, uh, I know y'all yeah. got a lot of testimonies, uh, baby. And but that testimony also builds up your faith mm -hmm. in who God is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It builds up that faith. It does. You know, and that makes you it's not that you cocky or anything, but you like, okay, I know who God is. Mm-hmm. And I know what God is able to do. Right. And I know that he said when I come to him and I pray to him that, you know, he would hear and he would give me the desires of my heart. But one of the other things that I learned later on as I'm, as a Christian and as a lover of Christ mm -hmm. is just going to him in prayer and admiration mm -hmm. of who he is. Right. Lord, I ain't coming to ask you for nothing. But I just want to give you thanks because of you and who mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. And just to tell you how much I love you because he has taken us mm -hmm. and he has protected us and he has given and he has, even in my sickness, he's still God. Yes, he is. And how much we love him mm -hmm. and how much God manifests himself to us on a day-to-day -day basis. And all that he's asking us to do is to relinquish our will to his. Mm -hmm. Trust him yeah. in every process of life and every faucet of life and sometimes. We may not understand why we go through some of the battles mm -hmm. that we face that we face in this life. Mm -hmm. But I can promise you, 
it'll be worth it in the end. Yes, it will. Because we're not and when living you look for back this at life. It, and when you look back at it, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I didn't see it then. But I can say, thank you, Jesus, that, you know, even if it's in a relationship, God, you bought me out of that relationship. Even if it's in a friendship, God, you know what? I thank you. Yeah. I, that's like you. last night um we had praise team practice and i told the girls because they have thank a hard you, time we worked on stage presence last night praise and i told the girls and i was like you know i said y'all gonna get to the place where you're gonna be running up and down these uh, up and down the aisles and mm -hmm. up and down the pulpit and the altar i said um and giving god praise and i said you're gonna look back at it I said, you can get to the point and be like, wow, I really allowed somebody to affect my worship from God. And yes. you're going to be like, you're going to look back and be like, that was stupid. Yeah. I said, because it doesn't matter what the people got going on. It doesn't matter what the congregation, because y'all, we got a tough crowd. But I was like, it doesn't matter about the, the what is happening. Don't be talking about my people. <laughs> God blessed us with people. Let's, yes, let he me did. Just say it. But I'm yes. saying that our our congregation isn't used to we, we, yeah, hands we lifted grow. worship and all that stuff. And we're so growing, a growing, lot of the time, Jesus, a I lot of time it. is that we as a praise team, we like to have our response based off of their response. Mm -hmm. When I said it needs to be the opposite, right. they need to see us worshiping in order for them to want to worship. Right. And so I was saying that, you know, right now I said y'all going to look back. Mm -hmm. And be like, there's no way that I used to allow mm -hmm. people to affect my praise right. to my Savior, my Redeemer. Yes. You know what I mean? And so you're going to think that it so was so worthy. stupid. And so, like, oh, my gosh, that did not even matter. Like, what? Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, we're going to get to that place. Right. So by the end of this year, y'all going to be jumping and clapping and stomping and doing all these <laughs> things. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and I was like, because, you know, Amen. it's not about us, but it's about. It's all about him. And it's about Jesus yes. and how much we love him and how yes. much we need him and how much we're desperate for him. Yes, thank and you, Jesus. Yes. um, yeah, yes, but this, yes, that yes. The, Jesus is just so good, and His love is yes, so pure, hallelujah, and God, hallelujah. yeah, that's I and mean, it is, it is, and it's just us one day, one one step at a time, mm -hmm. one step, because mm -hmm. He we we promise the right now, we promise the right now, mm -hmm. but let that faith be in Jesus Christ, let your hope be in Him, let your joy be in Him. Mm -hmm. Because it's only him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly in our lives that we need him to do. Mm -hmm. And he said, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, just acknowledge, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Even when things are so bad, acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. And when you're going through some of the toughest time in your life, acknowledge, acknowledge him. Because he said, I even know your moaning mm -hmm. and your groaning. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Sometimes, like you said, we can't always praise him like this. Sometimes we praise him in a place of moaning and groaning, mm -hmm. but just calling on him from a from a place of a heart posture. Right. And he hears that and he responds to that and he, he moves upon that. Let me tell you something. Oh, Jesus, girl. Let me tell you something. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father Lord. I thank you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mama, hallelujah. can't clap in the microphone. Mm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, but he's so good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, he is. And let me tell God, you something. So Go ahead. The hallelujah. amount of crying that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. I say it's no wonder that I'm, uh, I'm, that I'm dehydrated. <laughs> See, you ain't no good. The, the amount of, no, because my mouth be dry and I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm dehydrated. Yeah. And I'm like, it's because all this dog, I'm crying. Like I said, like this period has not been easy. It hasn't but, been. But, but, God, he's the only reason that I'm able to smile right now, that I'm able mm -hmm. to laugh, that I'm able to find joy. Yes. And I'm at joy, and unspeakable joy in the peace. About him, even in the yes, thing, like he is the reason yes. that I'm able to do that I'm able to still be me in the midst of trials and situations, even you, though I am Jesus. dehydrated. Hallelujah. And I've been trying to drink well, and get some more water. It is, it is, but it is. But God it's, is good and He's merciful. But there's been so many tears. Yes. There's been so many tears. And it's in, in so many times that I've just. Vain. They're not in vain. No, they're not in vain, but there's been so many times that I've been crying and I'm like, Lord, why am I even crying? Mm -hmm. Why am I even upset? Why? What is going on? Like, and 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 all God is saying is, Rochelle, 
You ain't even got to figure out why you're crying. Mm -hmm. Just let me do it. And that's, that's another aspect of just letting God work. Sometimes I don't even, sometimes I don't even need to know. You know what? I don't, sometimes I don't even need to know. Like I'm crying. I don't even know why I'm upset. Mm -hmm. And God is like, you ain't got to figure it out. Just let, just let me do, because there's a work that is happening Mm -hmm. spiritually, mentally, and physically. There is something that is happening. Just know that I am in the midst, that I am at work. Thank you, Jesus. Even when it don't feel like it. Yes. Even when it doesn't feel like it, mm-hmm. I am mm-hmm. in the midst. He's working it out. So What's that let, song? Sing just a little bit of the song, The Blood. Sing just a little bit. Oh, God. A little tip. This ain't no. Ain't no. That's okay. She, she, she don't put me on the spot. Yeah, just a little tip. This. Ain't no tiblet, mama. What? Tiblet. And tiblet is not a word. Well, go ahead. Just oh my gosh. Um. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. Thank and you, Lord. And it reaches to the highest mountain. Yes, thank you, and it Jesus. flows through the lowest valley. It's the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I can't clap with that. <laughs> you can. Hallelujah. Look. Hallelujah. Think it is. <laughs> but yeah, Thank but that's all Jesus. that. Oops. Yes. That's all that I have to say. Right on, um, right on time. So that's all that I have to say on today. And is there anything else that you wanted to add? Not at all. Nope. Okay. Well, you guys, be blessed this week. Yes, you may have a ton of tears to cry. Guess what? You're not crying. They're not in vain. You're not crying by yourself. Baby, we over here, we're fighting a battle. But guess what? God is going to remove our storm. Yes. He's either going to remove it or he's going to walk you through it. But yes. at the end of the, the lesson that I taught the other day, and I said, how do you know whether you should stay still keep moving or find shelter and it's simple take it to god take it to god the path that has the least resistance is probably the path that god wants you to be on um and so yeah that's all i have to say and i pray that you guys are blessed this week um you're not alone i'm praying for you i love you and remember jesus loves you more amen and yeah you have anything to say no no that's it all right bye Bye. y'all god bless